In this episode, we're going to look at a Sony CCD-TR81. This is the first of the subcompact Hi8 cameras that Sony manufactured. The first first Hi8 camera was the CCD-V5000. It was followed up by the TR81 in 1991. This is my own personal camera that I've had since new. It's been fixed once before, but it's been sitting around and now it doesn't work again. Today, we're going to do a total service on it coming right up. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking he's playing around with a black and white camera, but in fact, this is a color camera. And uh, this is one that I worked on a while back. It's my own camera. It's very old. It's um, one of the oldest Hi8 cameras that I own. And um, it's broken. Again, just due to sitting. So let's see what went wrong with it this time. This one is a CCD TR81. Oh, the viewfinders actually decided to come on with all kinds of retrace lines and stuff in it. It's very bright. I wonder if I can turn it down. We'll just try adjusting the brightness control. I think the brightness control is on the side of this thing, if I'm not mistaken. Where the heck was the brightness control on this? It's down here. Let's just see if I can turn this thing down because it's far too bright. Um, this is a very old camera. I've had this camera since it was new. Uh, I think I've changed a cap in it one time before. I've changed a cap or two in this thing before because it wasn't working. And now, of course, it's not working again. So we're going to take this one apart and see what's wrong with it this time. I'm going to go grab a tape, first of all, and see if it actually plays and see whether our problem is just a camera problem or whether it's a problem in the VCR. I found an old I-8 Metal P tape that goes back to 1991. So this could very well have been shot with this camera because uh, that's what I would have had. I would have had this camera. I might have had another one. I may have had a V... I might have my V5000 back then too. I don't know what it was shot with, but it says Snow Tape 1991. Oh, it's got my old cat. My old cat that's been dead f since, uh, I don't know, um, I think 2002. I had an old Siamese cat back then. He would have been probably pretty young back then. Because uh, 91 it was before I bought the place that I'm living in now. Um, as you can see, this is a short tape. This is a 20 minute tape. This was a real 20 minute tape. Yeah, I didn't think Sony made short tapes for high 8. Well, they did. They made 20s and they made uh, um, 60s and I think they made some 30s too, but this probably was a tape that was supplied by Sony, you know, to dealers to demo. And they just give us a short tape. But anyway, a good chance that this tape is going to clog the heads as soon as I plug this thing in. Because this was of the era when the, the, the high heat tape, the metal P tape, was just crap. But we'll see whether this thing plays a picture. And more importantly, will it play a picture in color? The moment of truth. I'll even plug the sound in. I think this is just some shots that I took uh, up on one of the local little hills when we had snow one year. Because where we are here, we very seldom get snow. And if we do, it's like we get like this much snow. We don't get any snow. So there's not very many years where we actually get a significant snowfall. I know people are probably laughing, you know, people that live in the east and stuff. Uh, where they get like mountains of snow, but uh, where I am here out on the wet coast, it rains, it doesn't snow. So when we get a snowfall here, it's something special. And hey, look at it, it's actually playing. Sort of. <laughs> I have a feeling the heads are going to clog up really quick. On uh, There they go, there they go. This is this crap Sony tape, right? This is what I've been talking about before with, with Sony tape is garbage. Watch how long it takes to head the heads to contaminate. <laughs> That's absolute shit. <laughs> I mean, this is... I mean, I, I shouldn't be laughing because a lot of people recorded their home videos on uh, this tape, you know, back in the early 90s. And if they haven't transferred it over to something by now, bye bye It's shot. It, this tape is just absolute utter garbage as you can see the heads are clogging up as I as I do this I fast forward a bit maybe if I rewind it a bit but this tape player 
actually appears to be working. So if I put in a tape that's not going to contaminate the heads, it might actually play. The problem is, I don't have many tapes that I can show you guys. That's the thing. Um, let's see if I can find one. See, I've got I've got a commercial tape, but um, I can't really play that because uh, for copyright, I might be further ahead. Maybe I'll do this. Uh, I might be further ahead just to grab a new high eight tape or or eight millimeter tape or something and put it into my EVS seven thousand and make a recording of something that I can show you guys, like some of my my content that I've created so that I actually have a tape with material, a current tape with material, because I do have a couple of, of brand new Hi8 tapes and brand new 8mm tapes that are not Sony, that are not going to clog up the heads like this. Most of the stuff that I've got in Hi8 is going to do this. If I play any of my old Hi8 tapes, they're going to do this, because they're, they're all, all the Sony ones anyway were crap. A lot of other ones I've got are in Digital 8 and they're different tapes and they don't have that problem, but the problem is, of course, this camera won't play a Digital 8 tape back. Oh, we're in luck. I found a tape. This is an old master tape of somebody's wedding that I did years ago, 1990, probably 96 or so. And this was a B-roll, so this would have been off my second camera that I was shooting with. I think this was the B-roll. Let's see if this one plays okay on this. It would have probably been recorded on a, uh, this could have been recorded on a CCD VX3, I'm thinking, possibly, because that's what I would have been using at the time. So, yeah, lots of dropouts happening. That's not on the tape. I just looked at this tape. I just, I just looked at this tape inside the house and it's not dropping out to this degree. So this player, I think the heads probably are pretty contaminated from running that other tape through it, but, um, yeah, this tape is not looking to be too good. The playback on this is looking terrible too. This is really a lot darker than the original one was. Um, we were shooting two cameras on this, so this was my second. This was my B roll. I was uh, running on the other camera. This would have been my assistant running this one. I think this was the B roll tape. But. As you can see, alignment-wise, it seems to be playing okay. It's just that the picture is is very dark, and um, blown out. So there's a luminance problem on playback on this as well. Let's take this camera apart. Let's close the mechanism down. On these units, you remove the arrow mark screws to open them up. And this, this is just from age, right? It, it had like this rubberized. Uh, like an anti-slip coating on the plastic and it's just over years it just they go like that it, that's just the way they are it's not like it's dirty or anything people think oh your, your your camera's been kept in a pigsty no no it wasn't it was actually kept in a case it was kept very clean um this is just the way that this plastic goes it all goes like this this anti-slip coating that they put on certain things like this i don't know whether it's reacting with the you know, with with oil from your from skin or sweat or what, but it, it always goes like this. It's just the way it is. So we're gonna see if we can get this improve the picture on this thing and uh, make it actually work by changing as few components as possible. Not that this thing has any value to me or anything. It's just. This is more of just a challenge. See what's gone wrong with it this time. I changed a cap on it before. Good chance that another one has gone bad or multiple ones have gone bad. I'm sure that probably multiple caps have gone bad. 
because uh, these things use these surface mounted crap passengers and they they go bad they all go bad of course a camcorder like this has zero value it's not worth anything like zero dollars is what this thing's worth I wouldn't be even be able to I don't think even give this thing away I have to pay somebody to take it off my hands but that's the way electronics gets right and it doesn't take that long before they they're completely worthless. Uh, one more screw down here. In working condition, they actually do have a little bit of value for someone who has tapes that they need to play for archiving, but other than that, no, they're not worth anything. This was the mini, or the compact, as they called it, compact eight millimeter chassis. The tape was threaded 360 degrees, almost, almost 360 he used four heads and uh, the heads were spaced at uh, I think they were 90 degree spacing on these yeah they were 90 degree spacing and basically how it works is the first head makes contact with the tape here and it records all the way around to here and then the next head it's not the head that's 90 degrees out of phase with the first one it's the head that's that's uh, 90 degrees out of phase. With 8mm, it was more than just, even on the full size drum, it wasn't just a 180 degree uh, wrap uh, like VHS and beta was. It was uh, 200, and I think it was 210 degrees because there was the extra wrap that was used for the PCM audio. And the same thing applies here. So when the, when the head gets over to about here it's now into the the PCM audio so there is an overlap of where two heads are in contact with the tape at the same time so the next head which is 90 degrees ahead will start writing while the first head is still in contact with the tape I think that's how they did it they worked like the compact VHS camera recorders that used the VHSC with the more compact drum they use four heads on it and you were instead of instead of stepping ahead uh, or instead of switching back and forth to heads that were 90 degrees out of phase you stepped ahead to one that was 90 degrees out of phase because so it would be like an A and a B and an A and a B so the next field started um, as the head was coming out of contact on the smaller drum which was a head and they ran the drum at a faster speed but recorded in the same format kind of like the beta movie the beta movie did things a little differently the beta movie only used one head and they used a much smaller head drum and they actually time compressed the video so they ran the horizontal scanning rate faster and recorded it in a non-standard format so that when it was played back in a standard machine it would play back at the correct horizontal frequency these ones didn't need to do that because the head drum wasn't that much smaller it was a little bit smaller but they're able to maintain the same writing speed. Oh, for sure this battery will be flat. This has been in here for probably since the camera was new. And there's no way that it's still could be holding any type of a charge. Yeah, yeah, 0 .2, 0 0.2 volts. I think we can dispose of that one. Of course, even the rechargeable batteries for this camera are completely shot. They were nickel cadmium batteries of the day. Uh, they weren't great to begin with. They used to build up a memory uh, quite easily. And uh, I don't think the batteries that, that were used on this camera will hold a charge. Now, also the little standby switch here. Normally, there's a little switch that when you flip down the, uh, the hand grip, you can turn it to standby, lock and standby. As you can see, the little switch here, the little plastic tab is missing. So it's always on in the on position. So as soon as you turn the camera into, to, turn, as soon as you turn the main switch into on, it uh, is going to try and turn the camera on. But I'd say the fact that this thing actually even plays after all these years 
because this thing hasn't been used in you know 20 odd years but I used to take this camera everywhere I used to take it on vacation I used to take it to all the crazy parties that I used to go to and document all my my friends getting smashed but fortunately for them <laughs> fortunately for them it was all recorded on Sony tape so it's gone it's lost none of them have to worry about the uh, the tapes coming back and biting them in the butt yeah, that's the one. Okay. Take the back off of it here. We'll unplug this little circuit board. Okay, it's a viewfinder in the button control panel. Here's the camera. Uh, this cap was done once before on it. I'm sure there's another one or more than one that's bad. Let's, uh, let's see. I can power this thing up from my external uh, power supply and it will output it will output video. Okay, I got power to the camera now. We turn on the switch. Which way has it got to go here? It's got to go to the back. So that should be in VTR mode. If I press the button over here, it should eject the tape. Oh, it might help if I turn the power supply on and give it enough current there we go we'll get a close-up of this uh, mechanism the way it loads it's kind of cool this one so here's our our tape guides notice that there's a little little flap here that moves up out of the way what that's for is that's to discharge any static electricity that might cause the tape to stick and jam. So as that closes down, that flips up. That's to make sure there's no tape looped out of the end of the cassette as the, as the front of the cassette opens, right? As the cassette opens up at the front, if the tape were to stick to the, to the uh, actual tape, or actual um, lid, that little flap is to separate the tape so that it doesn't uh, get eaten. Now when we close it, that's how the mechanism works. So let's load a tape. That should be play. It's actually gotten worse than it was. Now the picture's only playing in black and white. A little bit of color flashing away on the screen. But there's going to be something in here, I'm sure. One of these capacitors has gone bad. I'm going to pull the camera section out so that I can uh, look underneath here because there's some more of them underneath this section. So the camera, I think, just lifts out the whole board here. Oh, that's the camera board. The other board's underneath here. So let me just flip the camera board out and we can get at the video board. Because this one's part of the camera board where this cap was changed before.
So the boards here are as follows. The, the bottom one that my thumb is on there, that's the servo and the RF amplifier board and stuff. And the other one, the top board there that I'm holding, that's actually the camera and the video processing board for the chroma and luminance is on the top board. And the bottom one is just the system control and servo and so forth. The hi-fi audio board is over here. This one is the, the camera board supporting the CCD board and the, the camera processing, the video processing board is all here. I don't know what I missed there because I thought my camera was recording and it was off. So anyway, um, we're going to bridge some of these caps on this board here and on this one to see which one's going to bring back the picture. I know when I touch the bottom of this board here, I'll show you what happens on the screen. It's getting worse. Which one of these other caps just started leaking onto the board? So I'm doing what's called the wet finger trick. I've licked my finger and I'm just slowly moving it across the board to try and localize the area and see if the picture improves or deteriorates. As you can see, when I got my finger in that position, the picture actually improved momentarily. So this is the area I'm going to concentrate on. So now I'm going to bridge a capacitor just over top of the one that's bad. So I've got another little cap. I'm just going to bend the leads and we're going to bridge it over top and um, see what happens to the picture while it's playing. In case you're wondering, people are actually going up and they're pinning money onto the groom. So he's got $20 bills stuck all over them and five dollar bills i wish my wedding had been so much fun people were handing me money left right and center oh look much better much better that's almost perfect not quite but a lot better than it was let's change it the one i was doing was this one here so let's um, let's remove this cap and replace it. What's value is it? It is a. I was only using a 10 microfarad bridge, but let's see what value it is here. It is a um, a 33 at four volts. Okay, I was bridging it with a 10, and it brought the picture back. So let's try the proper size. So I'm going to cut this out.
picture. It's just about perfect. And we have sound working too. I guess the next thing to do is to see whether this thing actually will produce a picture from the camera. Take the tape out and we'll put it into uh, camera mode. And of course it's still producing a black and white picture. At least the zoom lens is working on it. So let's see if we can figure out why this camera is producing a black and white picture instead of color. It's got to be another cap. On this board of all places too. Probably the next cap over to it. Probably this little one over here. Let's just see whether I bridge it. Whether color comes back. Well, colors actually come back on it now. Looks like the lens is having trouble focusing. What usually causes the focus problems on these is in the lens itself, this is a, a, a servo controlled focus. And inside the lens, there's a, a little variable resistor which detects the position of the lens. And they get uh, dirty. We can take the lens off on this by just removing these screws. This will let me lift the lens assembly off and we can clean those controls that provide the feedback to the circuit. So that should lift the camera section off now if I'm not mistaken. Board unplugs. And this board unplugs. Oh, there's a soldered connection here on the shield. Okay, so now the, the camera block is off. There are, here is the little, what I'm talking to you about. There's this little variable resistor that's right here. And what that does, I'll take this foam off the lens so we can get at it. That's sound deadening foam, by the way, to stop the noise from the motors being picked up by the microphone. It didn't do a very good job, but that's what it was. That's the intention of it was to stop the noise from the, the lens moving and focusing from being picked up by the microphone. This little resistor up here, this little variable resistor that mounts onto the top of the lens is what provides feedback to the focus circuit. If we remove this, you'll see that it's just a standard variable resistor. And like all wipers, all sliders, they get dirty. So let's give this a shot of cleaner. I'm going to uh, not use an aerosol type cleaner because I don't want to contaminate the lens. So I'm just going to use some deoxit in the squeeze bottle. And we'll put some down into the variable resistor. And clean it. And then I'll put this back in. The lens right now is at the front of its travel, I believe.
that should do it. Another cap down here that might be at fault. We'll see whether I've got the focus on this thing working properly yet. I do believe I've got the focus working now. I don't have the color working yet, but as you can see, if I adjust the focus, on here it's in manual focus mode. I can adjust the focus. I zoom it in on something else over here. Let's see if I can adjust the focus on that. turning the focus the wrong way. You focus right down on the dirt on the lens. I'm going to change uh, these two caps while I've got this thing apart. Just to see whether we're going to get an improvement to the picture. Because, you know, they're, they're bad, right? They have to be bad at this age. Now you can you can hear the the electrolytic sizzling away there. So that was a 47. Let's see if I got a 47 at 6. And yes, they had been leaking. Now this one I'm going to have to probably lay it on its side just because it's, it's a little bit uh, a little bit bigger, but I think I can probably probably fit it in here. And for my Patreon supporters, there will be a full-length version of this video released because this has been substantially cut for time constraints, but there will be a full version of this one released uh, at a future date. Hopefully the uh, rest of this will fit in with this little board. There's capacitors sticking up here. Well, I got it to fit by cutting off one of the little supports that hold the lens in place. So now there's only two screws that hold it instead of three, but at least it fits. But it still has not solved my color problem. I've still got some problems with the color that I have to uh, work on. We'll look underneath this can here. And just see what's... Uh, I don't think I resoldered that, so I'll make sure it's not connected. I'm just going to look underneath this can and see if there's any filter caps under here. I have a feeling there might be some. So there's an IC here and there's this other 100 microfarad 6 volt cap that uh, is very likely faulty. I'll plug this in just so that I can uh, fire it up and bridge that cap and see if I get my color back. I want you to see what happens when I... I'm just going to bridge that cap and I'm going to turn on the power. Come on, connect. Ah! 
We have a color pitcher. Far out. Let's change that cap out. Okay, turn on the power supply, and turn on the camera, and uh, take a look at the picture that we're going to give you here. Nice, huh? That looks, that looks absolutely spectacular. And the, the autofocus is working. Love it. It's looking like a new camera. Holy smoke, that's got a good picture on it. It's actually probably usable now. That is the art of repairing a camcorder. I tell you, I tell you, these things were just an engineering marvel when they came out with this little camera this size. It was one of my favorite cameras is this one here. That's why I bought it. it. Was it was my favorite camera that Sony offered at the time. There was nothing else like it that really performed as well as this little camera did. I mean, it, it has a great picture. And I'm going to put it back together now, and uh, we're going to test it out, do a recording on it, and playback, and uh, we'll see how it looks. So first, we'll clip the board back in place. You see, I'm not too worried about putting that shield back in at this point because uh, I just need a place that I can tuck this cap in the way out of the way here so that it's not going to uh, cause a problem. But I think we're okay. I know somebody's probably going to get upset with me for not putting the shield in, but too bad, so sad. It's my camera, and uh, I've learned <laughs> the past of things that can happen when you start sticking shields back in when you've put bigger capacitors under them. I did that once with another camera that was mine and it, the camera worked perfect. It was beautiful. It was my little PAL camera. It was a little Canon 8mm PAL and the power supply uh, caps were leaking and I took it apart and I changed them and it was all working perfect. And I thought, okay, I'm just going to put the shield back on just so that it's perfect. And when I put on the shield, I guess it touched something and I powered it up and that was it. It was dead. I killed it. So I don't want to kill this one. So we'll leave that shield off. I'll take my chances that it's not going to cause any interference to anything or any interference that it receives will be acceptable. Oh, um, the viewfinder. I want to make the viewfinder work better because it's kind of washed out too. So let's just pop the viewfinder apart and I bet you there's a cap in there that probably should be replaced. one of these little tubes in it too, these cute little tubes that the yoke is bigger than the tube itself but I think this one's a round tube in this one this is pretty old that little square tube that, that uh, and that other uh, that other one that I've got that has a little square tube in it um, it's actually cooler because it is you know a rectangular square tube this one's a round tube I'm pretty sure this one's a round tube on this one could be wrong I've certainly been wrong before and I'm wrong this one here, it's a rectangular tube. Cool. I think it's a rectangular tube. Yeah. This one is one of those little citizen little rectangular tubes. And the picture was washed out on it. Hmm, I wonder if it was one of these caps or whether it was one of the ones in the camera itself that was at fault. I guess the only way to find out would be to um, turn it back on and see how it looks. Now that I've fixed the, the camera problem, it might have been one of the caps in the main camera that was driving this. Because this does not have any surface mounted caps in it, which are typically the ones that uh, cause the problems. This just got through hole. So I'm just going to put this thing back together and um, we'll see.
All right, which one of these goes where? Oh, they both fit, so I don't remember which one went where. I may have to re recall the video. So I'm thinking maybe one of these caps has gone a bit bad in the uh, driver board here for the viewfinder. We'll just pull this out and see whether I can check some of them. Actually, I think the, the viewfinder is okay. I just resoldered one of the capsules on there and uh, it doesn't have any retrace lines on it now at all and it, it looks normal. The, the black and white image looks normal. It looks washed out if I don't shield it, right? But that looks perfectly normal to me, to my eyes. It's, it looks a little, bright, little bit brighter on the camera here just because of all the dark around it. It looks fine, so I'm going to put it together. Well, I hope this is right. This one's going on the front here. This is the remote eye anyway, so... That one goes in here for sure. It's a microphone. And uh, we'll, we'll test this thing. I'm going to grab a tape that I can record on and we'll do a recording on this thing. So this is a tape that I can make a recording on because it's only got a partial recording on the entire tape. So let's uh, make sure that the counter is at zero, which I'm sure it is, and we'll press record. Tape is now turning and I should be recording right now onto this tape. I'm not recording in high 8 mode right now, I'm just recording in standard 8 mode because this is just a regular standard tape. I used to use this in my uh, uh, in my uh, digital 8 deck to make recordings and it was a it was a production I did uh, 19 years ago and um, it ran into two tapes it was a long recording so it ran into two tapes and um, uh, it only it only used like the first 10 minutes of the tape so this is what's recording beyond that Colors looking great. Let's uh, play it back, see what it does. Go to VTR mode. We'll rewind it. Okay, and let's see if we've got sound. And I should be recording right now onto this tape. I'm not recording in high 8 mode right now, I'm just recording in standard 8 mode because this is just a way to do standard tape. I used to use this in my uh, uh, in my Well, as you can see in here, it uh, actually performed better than I thought it was going to perform because uh, I didn't change any of the caps on this audio board and I'm sure that some of the ones on the sound board over here probably need to be done as well. Um, <clears throat> or it even could be on the mic preamp board here, there's another one here which I didn't do. Um, but I didn't do any of these ones down here. I'm sure some of these ones here probably, there's a bunch of them here, and I'm sure the on the AU-101 board, I'm sure that some of these are going to need to be, if not all of them, are going to need to be done. But I'm not going to do that. Not in this video, anyway. Maybe we'll come back and... Stuff falling apart here. Maybe we'll come back and work on this thing again 
and do one where we actually recap this board. This has got a lot of little caps in it, right? And, and to change all these ones out, how many are there on here? There's a bunch of them. There's 16 surface mounted caps on this board. Now, probably not all of them are bad, but I bet you there's several of them that are and they would need to be replaced. And I don't have enough, I don't have any of these little surface mounted caps to begin with. And this is pretty tight spacing in here. So putting in a conventional one, it's one thing to put in a conventional cap when you got a lot of real estate and you can bend the legs over, but when you're you're in close proximity like this, it's a little more difficult to to do it. Or do this again. Maybe I had those plugs reversed. Switch them around here and see whether the sound is any better. Because I just thought of that. Maybe I had the plugs reversed. So let's see whether that works any better. I think that answers that question. Um, I had these plugs reversed. I didn't even look at my video, but uh, I'm, I'm positive that the red one was the one that was going to the uh, the board when I took it apart. But I may have put it apart. I may have put it together wrong the last time. So I just figured I would swap those around just to see whether it made any difference. And, uh, well, it uh, appears to be not as noisy as it was. So maybe I had those reversed. And in case anyone is curious as to which what the wires do, it is the red wire that goes to the board here. The one with the red, the one with the white is the remote. It's This is the headphone. That's all that does is that hooks up the headphone plug. So if you get it reversed, like I did, um, there's voltage here. It's normally used to feed the infrared receiver and voltage is being sent into the audio output and that was causing me some pretty nasty distortion on one channel that's why it was sounding like crap but put it the right way and uh, it sounds a little better I, these caps probably still do need to be replaced but that's not going to happen at least not on this video probably never will happen it's this was just kind of an exercise to go through this to see whether i could make it look better than it did and uh, I think we've solved that problem. It's looking like a new camera now. Got the focus and zoom problem fixed. Got the video problem fixed. Got the playback problem fixed. Got the camera problem fixed. I would say that that's a success. We'll see how many screws are left over when we're done. I probably could sell this camera too and get something for it even though they're not worth much to anybody except for if somebody has a bunch of high eight tapes that they're wanting to transfer and their existing camera is shoebarred as they say then uh, to somebody like that something like this has a little bit of value not a lot but I could probably get 50 or 60 dollars for it as a camera for transferring existing tapes to uh, you know to digital feedback Got a remote control for it too. Even the remote control works. Cool, huh? One last thing to put on. The tape door. The tape door fits in like this somehow, clips in. And there's two different size screws that hold the tape door in it. That's these two right here. They're little metal screws, little longer but thinner metal screws that Hold the tape door on. There's the viewfinder, as you can see. It's nice and clear. Looks fantastic looking through it to the with the eye. Let's uh, make a recording. There it's going, flashing because the the lithium coin cell is dead. 
but we'll just uh, make a recording here and uh, we'll play it back now that it's put back together. There going, flashing because the, the lithium coin cell is dead. But we'll just uh, make a recording here and uh, we'll play it back now that it's put back together. There we go. It's uh, back together. It works. Records and plays. Sony 1991 CCD TR81. The first of the subcompact by eight cameras. I say this one was kind of neat because it had manual override. You could override your exposure manually. You could change your shutter speed, white balance, and hit focus, and you could focus the lens up front, which was something that most of the cameras of the day didn't have. They A lot of them had autofocus, and you could not manually override. This one here had a little optical encoder, had a fader button up front here and all. But there it is, um, back together. It's working again, and uh, I don't know why I fixed this thing. I guess I was bored. Anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll, we'll catch you in the next one again real soon. Bye for now. And don't forget that subscribe button.